<sighs> Welcome to this short informal conversation about, yeah, the launch of Tifa Dao on 21st of April. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully 21st of April. So we will see, we'll see. We'll see the exact date on it. Close to that date, for sure. That is the intention. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, there's both excitement and nervousness uh, radiating in me in this moment, yeah. um, which also makes it very real. You know, I, 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 and I think that's a big part of uh, what we also stand for at the Institute for Aliveness is, is. Um, going through these human experiences that creates a sense of aliveness. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so there's a lot moving and, um, and, and what a beautiful time to transition into a uh, decentralized organization. Yeah. Uh, it's so magical, Alice, because you just came out from Vipassana. Like it's, the difference between fear and excitement is just a breath away. <laughs> mm. Sensation, if you're breathing or you're not breathing, totally different <laughs> experience. <laughs> Love it. Uh, alrighty. So this, this short conversation, it's about, this short informal conversation, it's to talk a little bit about why. Why 21st of April is chosen and is chosen around that date very specifically and very deliberately because... Hopefully, this gets released near there. Hopefully, this podcast is released around that date. Before or after, it doesn't matter if you listen to after the date or before the date. Know that whoever that is listening out there in the ethers, the date was chosen very, very specifically. It has a lot of things that Tifa does in a very holistic manner. That timing, like cosmic timing, cosmic design, it's part of the equation oftentimes. And yeah, that, that date on 20, 20 or 21st, depending on where you are on Earth, but we'll just put it 21st of April, 2024. It's one of the biggest date of the year. Mm. And we, we, we'll start off with April is a, in, it's an interesting month of the year. April is the biggest month of the entire year. So all of you mm. who likely are uh, hearing this would have moved through April of 2024. You would have gone through whatever you've gone through in life. You will attest to the global scenario and the personal life events that it as an intense month of sudden change of potentially breakthroughs and potentially new directions that come. That's why in hopes of capturing this time and space right now that we are relaunching the Tifa Dao, and capturing that entire energy in this point in time. Yeah, and I'm curious, Carway, um, could you just provide a little bit more context why the month of April may feel quite intense uh, for many of us in this moment? Yeah, perfect. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so often every astrologer has been looking at April for this year because Usually transits, by the nature, every month there is something happening. Transits will come and fall. It's at different seasons, different cycles. But April this month is interesting because there is just back-to-back -back major, I don't want to say heart hitter, but major transits that happens. Mm. So, we, so we open up with double eclipse in Libra and Aries axis on which ends at the last totals, total North Node solar eclipse that goes through the eastern side of US to all my US crowds out there. Hopefully you get to see it, <laughs> especially mm -hmm. at your east coast. Like it's, it's a spectacular, it, 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 it's rare, as, as you know, it's rare that it crosses such a, such a major spot whereby there's so many cities, major US city gets to witness the totality of it for two minutes only. And... Yeah, it started off with that one on 8th of April, followed by the Mars-Saturn conjunction in Pisces, 10th of April, which on a global level, there's so many things that stirred up. Episode 2 of the Israel 
Israel, the entire that the entire scene happening there, lots mm -hmm. of things there, which culminates finally to the twenty first of April with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Like these three things so close to one another, back to back itself. Everybody is going through roller coaster in our own unique way, in different ways in life around April. Yeah, and I'm curious, um this this pivotal transition that Tifa is going to go through, uh, of um, you know, transitioning from a a solo founder to gifting the organization to the graduates yeah. of the Institute. Uh, for aliveness with always the intention of um, wanting to create a decentralized space um you know and 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 one of the um values that we've always spoke into as part of tifa is our belief or our desire to get into a more post-capitalistic mindset mm. um as well as this deep desire and and um knowing that health gets to be our birthright, that health gets to be free, and that um, we want to create a system that actually truly in, in, uh, incentivize and empowers um, each of us to take really health back into our own hands. And so it's, um, yeah, it's it's definitely a, interesting pivotal moment really for the organization to continue to evolve um and embody what what our vision is which is which is double humanity and so with this uranus jupiter conjunction you know what do you see in terms of that date for the um for really the launch of this dao and it's oof, we can split so much into this one. This, this <laughs> one is the opening. This one is the, the, the really the main juice of it. Why? Mm. Why? And put the date aside. Why Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus is the date that we chosen to 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 launch this out because the signification, the archetypical signification of this transit in Taurus relates so much to what we are the entire mission and vision and the goal of TIFA right here. A little bit of context for people. So in a very sh hopefully short manner, <laughs> in a hopefully very short manner, I'll go very deep. Jupiter, Jupiter and Uranus, two different planets. Jupiter, you will see it up on the sky. Uranus, you can't see it. It's too small. You will need to see it from a telescope. But the signification of, so, so astronomically, they are planets. Astronomically, there are planets that you can or you cannot see with the naked eye. So what? Mm -hmm. But on a more psychological, a cosmological, and a more spiritual context to the, the that alignment in particular, Jupiter always correlates with the planet of expansion, the planet of abundance, the planet of, of, of opportunities, of growth. Mm -hmm. Make it bigger. And it's not to say that growth is good in a way good and bad come together if you are mm. if you are if you are obese <laughs> jupiter is not so good <laughs> because you will expand but if you are if you are underweight you want to gain weight it's kind of that the kind of that analogy expansion everything mm. jupiter conjuncts expands which mm. jupiter supports the the planet of uranus because uranus is the is the planet of higher consciousness the mm. of the the masculine side of the upper world, I will say, mm. more thinking and intuitive side of the upper world, which is mm. different than the, than the feminine side of the upper world, which is more universal love, freedom, uh, universal love, compassion, grace, oneness of it all. So this is more the left the left brain of the higher the higher worlds, and mm. yeah, it has a lot to do with revolution, scientific breakthroughs, consciousness leap. The, the, the key word oftentimes for this conjunction, Uranus-Jupiter, we always say quantum leap. Mm. Historically, whenever we have this 
aspect that happens every 14 years, if I'm not mistaken, every 14 years, there is quantum leap in humanity's understanding. Mm. A little bit of example. So Yeah, I want to highlight the like few words. Yeah. Well, I want to highlight just those few words you just said, basically, um, in terms of the quantum leap, the the higher consciousness, the um sort of the revolution of technology yeah, in that. Um and, and and really, you know, this jump from where Tifa is now to a DAO, which becomes a sort of a governance upon Web3 and blockchain technology in which we would be using smart contracts. Um, and for those who are not totally familiar with it, one of the terminologies that comes out of using a smart contract may sound a little paradoxical, but it's, it's, it's to build a trustless system and you might wonder why trustless is because um, you no longer, I guess, need to worry about trust because trust is already embedded in its system itself. No. Um, and there is a beauty to that because if we feel like we need to have trust, then we can lose trust. But if you have a trustless system, um, it's systematically already taken care of. So, so this quantum leap of technology related to the Uranus Jupiter conjunction does feel very energetically fitting for yeah. the launch date of this DAO. And I also just heard you mention that it's also within um, Taurus. And I'm wondering um, what energy does Taurus bring into uh, this conjunction as well that, um, you know, when Tifa speaks into our vision of like, bring more embodiment uh, and that connection of mind, body, spirit. Um, how does that energy play into this launch as well? It's so perfect. Like it's, it's historically, so historically, so Jupiter, Uranus, Jupiter expands everything. Uranus is all the tech, all the decentralization, all the, all the consciousness that this aspect is so aptly happening in Taurus, the sign of the body the sign of materiality, the sign of value. So tokenization is a very horrible thing. How do we disrupt the entire thing of how do we value something that cannot be valued? <laughs> Uranus and Jupiter, upper world. How do we find a way to, through blockchain and tokenization, to value the, the intangible? Traditionally, Taurus is always about, ooh, the things I can see, touch, feel, and taste, tangible. With mm. this aspect here, like how do I make it social value, as value, as tradable, commodified value? And it's, it's, mm. it's magical because what, what we are expecting, at least what astrologers are expecting, it's you, you look at every sign of Taurus, value, art, and beauty, Expect mm -hmm. more than that. those kind of which which Tifa is kind of like one of those social tokens and all. How do we more development will come in the next 14 year cycle as Jupiter Uranus move again until they conjunct in the next sign? The entire cycle of this I want to say commodification, but the trade, like how do we exchange based on how do we materialize and exchange value based on shared based principles? Mm. It's and, and funnily, when, when I was doing a little bit of research on it, it's also funny because Horus is always the sign related to labor. Mm. Historically, historically, Jupiter Uranus conjunction back then, or anything major happening in Taurus, there was always revision of labor. So I remember a few years ago, like I think it's Europe, I think Scandinavia was the first country that announced the four day work, work week. It has a mm, lot mm -hmm. of signification, funny Leela, in Taurus. Mm. I would expect it to be Virgo initially because the sign of the work, but funnily, Taurus, labor union has something to do with Taurus somehow. And this conjunction itself is like, it's put really pushing the edge because it's not only labor right now, it's, all right, we are sovereign beings, we are organizing a way of work together in a decentralized autonomous organization. It's really... It fits in so perfectly with like how the entire themes of where we're going. Hmm. And 
yeah, and and all of this is the logistic, the execution part of the exec of of why we're doing it. But ultimately, ultimately, a greater purpose, which ties to the main purpose of why we are doing, we are moving this pivoting in this direction anyway, is the mission of Tifa, embodied embodied spirituality, living live living the talk. Wait, is it living the talk? Mm -hmm. That sounds that that doesn't sound all right. Wait. What walking the talk is talking a the talk. <laughs> talking the talk. Right. I'm only living spiritually. Yeah, it, it's uh, and, and it's so magical because around that day, around so again the exact day it's it's around then on April of twenty three on April of twenty three there will be a full moon in Scorpio. There will be a full moon in Scorpio. So the sun has entered Taurus by then. There will be a full moon in Scorpio. The conjunction happens in Taurus. So traditionally, what I always think of, and this is so magical when I start when I study it. Whenever I see the sun in Taurus, which the, the launch date will be in the sun in Taurus anyway, and the moon very close to Scorpio, that particular full moon, it's always the Buddha, the Buddha full moon. So a little bit of context and let me let me get the exact detail. I always have to check on this one. So a little bit of context. <laughs> Buddha was born on a Taurus season when the sun was in Taurus. Buddha was enlightened. Wait, sorry. No. Ah yeah. Buddha was born on Taurus season on a full moon in Scorpio. And he was enlightened and he passed away in the opposite, when the full moon is in Taurus. So you can kind of see like, wait, spirituality, higher consciousness, what does it have to do with like Ta Taurus and, and Scorpio, those two signs? Which is so pivotal in a key spiritual figure's life. Like he was born in mm -hmm. a full moon in Scorpio, he enlightened and passed in the full moon in Taurus. It's again, sun moon axis between Taurus and Scorpio. Why these two in particular? Because historically, Scorpio, which is very Tifa, very underworld s, <laughs> and likely if the listeners would have listened, we talk about this a lot of times. The threshold, the underworld experience, Scorpio keeps on coming up, which is so so magical that, like, really embodying spirituality, one is required to go through multiple initiations, underworld to upper world initiations. To surrender what is not until what is left is the death of the ego, so such that the authentic being can blossom. And it is, and on a deeper level, so people always think of, oh, Scorpio, underworld, death and rebirth, intensity, let's go, let's go, <laughs> that kind of thing. To balance it on the other side, which polarity always works, is when Taurus is really, ah, whatever happens. The death and the underworld, the triggers that I have in April, which most of you will relate. <laughs> the triggers that I have in April, the intensity that I just went through, the breakthroughs, everything is okay. If I sit in my body, Taurus, the sign of body, and I notice the sensation and the energy moving within my body, and what a joy, and what excitement, and what, what energy it is to connect within, and there is a sense of serene, calm, and peace, regardless of what is happening outside. Hmm. It is literally the deepest part of embodiment when we talk about Taurus. Yeah, and and I just want to take this moment for the listeners. Um, if you haven't been uh, part of the Tifa journey, um, our first actually episode of this season is an interview with Dr. Andrea Page, the founder of Tifa. And in that episode, it was also spoken into this process of like death and rebirth as part of the transformational process of that. Um, and, the, and the beauty of that and, and, and how that uh, evokes aliveness in us. So when we were just speaking into, you know, one of the reasons we are going down this path in terms of like walking our talk is knowing that in order to birth something different and new, um, 
requires sort of this moment of death and rebirth of like this death of how T uh, Tifa was operating to the birth of this Tao, um, along with the transition of becoming and, and birthing more and more into uh, the desire to be more post-capitalistic, uh, more decentralized, and creating um, systems, like we mentioned, to incentive incentivize health. Yeah. And um, yeah, so there's an invitation also for the listeners to kind of listen to that part one and part two to get more context of, you know, where we're going with all this astrology context uh, yeah. into this play as well. And, and so that is the beauty of Tifa is um, looking at everything so holistically, right? And when we think about applied epigenetics and holistic health and that alignment a body, mind, and spirit is being able to look at um, that this one, I don't even know the right word, like action or task or launch um, mm. has so many greater meaning than than just a launch. Um, mm. And we can look at it from all these different lenses. And so, yeah, thank you for highlighting uh, the Scorpio Taurus, um, like, and energy that is so potent or will be much more potent uh by april 21st and 23rd uh, it's, it's, it's always very magical like it's it's archetypical signification meanings are, are drawn from all of this and whew, i'm excited <laughs> i'm excited to see what unfolds on 21st of april or onwards <laughs> yeah me, yeah me too and you know, I'm not sure if, if this is the direction we may want to go. Um, how do you think all this also play with the age of Aquarius? Oh, the greater context. All right, perfect. So, ooh, <laughs> oh, a lot of things can be spoke into this one. Hmm. Hmm. So, and checking in with your body, Taurus, of what <laughs> is coming up for you as you think about the times that we are living in right now uh, and the exponential future that is coming in. Well, and to give the audience a little context, uh, Carway is very well aware that I have a stellium in Taurus, <laughs> meaning that I have five planets uh, in, in, in uh, Taurus. So, so I'm appreciating this reminder to kind of like take this moment to, yeah, like as Carway continues sharing, I'm going to, really feel in it, into it. Ooh. It's funny it's because you have a moon in Gemini too. So perfect. <laughs> perfect with the with the with the direction. Well, where... Actually I have a moon in Aquarius with a rising Gemini. Rising in Gemini. Yeah. Rising right. in Gemini. Which is which is yes. perfect conversation. Yes. <laughs> uh. mm. So there's a lot there. Like and Depends on when you are born. Depends on when you are born. But if you're in, if you're the millennial generation, you will definitely get to see this in your lifetime. That, that mm. there is a major transition happening right here, right now, in these few years period between the 2020s to the 2030s, starting with COVID, potentially ending in 2032. The transition of an age, as we say. And we are transitioning from a more earth sign history with the industrial revolution, with the corporate capitalism, with the hierarchy and the uh, all, all of that to a more air age. Over the next 200 years, every Saturn-Jupiter conjunction will happen in an air sign, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, which started, surprise, surprise, not started, let me not use that word, which really solidifies itself at 2020. We have one happening in 1980, and surprise, surprise, the internet was birthed around then. The idea mm. of the internet connectivity was birthed around then, which mm. that is just that is just like the entree to what is about to come as we get into 2020, whereby Jupiter-Saturn officially and solidly 
over the next 200 years will be in air sign. So those two are social planets. Historically, wherever those two are, that starts their cycle. The society develops in that direction. And it's so magical because we can always trace 200 years of fire, water, air, earth, fire, water, air, earth on how humanity develops. Whenever it's in fire signs, usually like spirituality is a big thing. Same as water signs. Water and fire oftentimes do with quantum leaps of understanding of spirituality. It's an earth sign. It's time to get practical. Industrial revolution. Corporate. Corporate is the best thing. And as we come to the end of the earth, you see the dangers, the shadows of too much earth. Commodification, greed, all of that global warming, exploitation of mother nature, earth taken to extremes. Now, we, as we enter the age of air, which is right now where we are, since COVID, work is changing. The way we relate to people is changing. The way we relate to ourselves is changing. The way we mm. organize society is changing. Air is bleeding into earth somehow. The way we value things is changing from tangible to intangible. The way, the way humans migrate, the movement of self is changing. Ownership is changing. Last time, mm. I need to have private ownership of the house. Now it's potentially co-working, co-living, co co-owning. Everything is shared in the very nature of air itself. It's changing. Mm. And we are just starting 2020. So we are very early in this 200-year cycle, which bleeds into the entire part of why, like, if the listeners, you would have noticed by now, four years into COVID, the way you live, the way you work, the way you connect with people, the way you meet people, the way you keep up to date with people is really ramping up and really changing in that way. Yeah, so I've heard um, that most astrologers weren't surprised by COVID in 2020, that they that there was um, energetic potency for something to occur. I mean, no one could predict it was going to be COVID as it is. And you're right, Carway, because the way that we live, the way we work, um, the way we connect has definitely drastically changed uh, during 2020 and, 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 beyond. and beyond. Yeah. Um, and so, so we use that sort of um, experience. Mm -hmm. And he, what I'm hearing you say is that was just the beginning of this 200 year cycle um, as well as the beginning of this i think you said 12 or 14 year cycle as well uh 14 um that really were what we are birthing here with tifa and the direction that we want to go with this dao and going towards sort of this more you know co-living co-working etc is very aligned to the energies that are at play in this moment. And so, yeah, thank you for sharing that context. And more will come, more will come. It's not only Tifa, like every aspect of how society organizes itself, more will be shown over the next few years that that it it it, it goes beyond personal individual individual individuality to more of a shared collectivity. In the nature mm. of in the nature of network exponential effects and mm. yeah just like the nature of air it comes and goes very very quick everything connects it's it's not about who has the most capital potentially it's potentially who has the best idea and network hmm. yeah and and to pull a little bit on that thread of like um becoming less individualistic perhaps uh, you know, we often, I mean, I wouldn't say just often talk about, but, but we are quite conscious of, um, embodying the transpersonal yeah. as part of this journey, hmm. right? That it is here for the transpersonal experience of, of, of what is for humanity, which is, um, greater than any one of our individual needs. And so from a, astrology perspective and energy perspective um 
could you speak into something along the lines of like the transpersonal consciousness or transpersonal space? Hmm. In context of earth and air? Interesting. I never made that connection before. <laughs> well, I had made that connection before, but hmm. Interesting. Could you ask that question in a slightly different format? Yeah, I, I guess, um, you know, I'm not super as familiar with astrology as you are, but is there any um, planetary or astrological energy that would um, be supportive of the transpersonal experience? Aha, uh -huh. all right. Oof, all right, I, I get this question. Oh, there's so much. It goes to the even great, the bigger, even bigger cycle. <laughs> we just started with a 200 social cycle and it goes, this question really goes into the, 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 the Aquarian age question. Mm -hmm. We are shifting from the age of, and we are already in that transition. That's why these few years seems very, since the start of the industrial revolution until, well, they time 2032. It can be earlier, 2026, but these are pivotal transitionary ages. It really comes back to the entire earth to air kind of transition. The earth way of thinking to the air way of thinking. And yeah, as we, as we grow along in this global village, ideas, cultures, different, different local, local customs, local upbringings, local conditionings gets exchanged here and there. Like eventually we mm. get to a more shared collective consciousness. And with it, birth is it's kind of like expansion, expansion of, of my, my family, my tribe, my people from a, from a, what was it called again? That consciousness scale thingy, that egocentric to the transpersonal one <laughs> from Ken Wilbur, Wilbur Integral Theory. That yeah, I was gonna say, uh -huh. that yeah, with all this shared connectivity, this commingling and this idea exchange of it since the internet, like consciousness has exploded since the internet. When you get access to a, not only a spiritual enlightened being in your own place in your own village, but to a global village of oh my gosh, it's scattered everywhere. There are like enlightened beings all over the place. How do how do we like slow the osmosis all of it? And, and embody all of it. Which mm. comes down to embodiment again, the Taurus thing. Like, it's not enough just to know it. You must live it. Right, and yeah. And, um, and yeah, that's a perfect way to sort of connect that uh, transpersonal and collective consciousness back into the body. And, and again, we'll, we'll constantly be going through this theme of like holistic, right? So it's like everything is so interconnected and, and um, part of this journey is to yeah really find that alignment of that mind body and spirits um, and through that hero's journey of us continuing to have cycles of uh, deaths and rebirth to to continue peeling back that onion to get closer to our truest authentic selves in parts of this journey yeah, so big launch day coming down, coming up real soon. Exciting. <laughs> Very. We will see what unfolds coming up. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and perhaps this is a short blurb of <laughs> where we will we will go next. We will see more of you, and you hear more of us. <laughs> Let's not see. We'll hear more of us moving forward. Yeah. Thank you for listening. And um, yeah, thank you, Carway, so much for wow. your astrology insights. Um, I know that it's been really pivotal in my life and I'm excited that we get to share with the audience uh, more of that as well through the Tifa lens and, and where we are headed. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And excited to see where we go next. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>